Are we still alive? Are we good? How about a thumbs up from our on-site and online participants? Okay, awesome. Okay, I will be your moderator for this session. I'm Hazel Gregory Arrozado, the focal person for the Center for Linkages, Internationalization, and Language Studies at the Holy Cross of Davao College. And I have the privilege of introducing to you our speaker, who will be tackling data science from the University of Trento in Italy. We have Mr. Jonathan Bibi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Trento. Thank you for attending. Um, during this webinar um, entitled Business That Works for EU on the 18th of November 2022 during the European Higher Education Fair Philippines, I will be um, giving you first a brief overview of the University of Trento uh, and some unique opportunities we have uh, in general, and then also specifically um, uh, briefly about our Department of Computer Science. Uh, my name is Jonathan Bybee, and I work for the International Relations Division at the University of Trento. Um, we are located in Northern Italy, not far from the Austrian border. Uh, the city of Trento has around 115,000 inhabitants, and the University of Trento has around 17,000 students, of which approximately 1,300 are international students. We have three campuses uh, in the city of Trento. We have the city campus where you'll find the economics and management department, humanities, international studies, law, sociology, and social research, and our new medical school, which is currently not open to international students. Then up on a uh, hill just outside of Trento, we have our um, computer science, engineering, math, physics, cellular computational and integrated biology departments, and um, agriculture, food, and the environment. And then uh, in a small city just south of Trento uh, called Rovoreto, we have our Department of Psychology and Cognitive Science and uh, Mind and Brain Sciences. Um, we have a broad variety of bachelor's and master's degrees taught completely in English. Uh, we have two bachelor's um, programs in English, comparative European and international legal studies and a Bachelor in Computer Communication and Electronic Engineering. Then as you can see, we have um, many uh, different options for master's degrees. Uh, we have 25 total taught in English, um, all the way from European and international studies to energy engineering, to agri-food innovation management, physics, uh, materials engineering, et cetera. So we have a, a really uh, broad variety of master's degrees taught in English. Uh, we have PhD programs in English as well. Uh, 13 total. Um, again, here, a uh, diverse array from uh, sociology and social research to biomolecular sciences to economics and management, math, physics, and so on. Uh, we also have a language center where you can study, of course, Italian, but also other languages like English, French, German, Russian, Spanish, and we have also Arabic and Chinese. Um, other than our academic uh, offer, we have uh, other unique opportunities here at the University of Trento for both local and international students. Um, the University of Trento is a member of the ECIU, or the European Consortium of Innovative Universities, uh, with a major focus on innovation and challenge-based learning. Uh, also, we uh, have the first school of innovation in Italy with um, a focus on entrepreneurship, innovation, soft skills, teamwork, and leadership. Uh, we compete in the Innovation Olympics, which involves groups of uh, students competing to solve a real-life problem and then winning prize money to implement their solution. We also have a contamination lab, the C-Lab, uh, in order to generate and optimize business ideas. So as you can see, these are unique opportunities to help um, um, enhance uh, soft skills and other skills that you don't necessarily always uh, learn in the classroom. 
Now, as mentioned, uh, specifically about the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science, uh, or DZ. Uh, we have a bachelor's degree in English at DZ, um, Computer Communications and Electronic Engineering. It lasts three years and requires 180 credits to graduate. Um, it's an interdisciplinary program, and it provides students with um, general skills in the information engineering area. Students uh, specialize to, in one of the following fields, information technology, telecommunications, or electronics. And the main subjects are math and physics, economics and business organization, computer engineering, technologies and systems for telecommunications, and electronic devices and circuits. So that is the ICE bachelor's degree taught in English at our Department of uh, Computer Science. Then we have uh, various master's degrees in English um, at DZ. Um, all of them are two years and require 120 credits to graduate. We have the Master in Artificial Intelligence Systems, Master in Computer Science, Master in Information and Communication Engineering, Master in Human Computer Interaction, Master in Quantitative and Computational Biology, and a Master in Data Science. And then we have two double degree masters, EIT Digital Master School and EIT Manufacturing Master School. Uh, we have three uh, different uh, three-year doctoral programs at DZ. Um, the first is PhD in Information and Engineering Computer Science with a focus on high quality original research and innovation and a mandatory period of international mobility. Second, we have the PhD in Industrial Innovation. It's an interdisciplinary program, including various departments at the University of Trento and other collaborating entities. And companies are also highly involved and propose real life problems for students to solve. And finally, we have the National PhD in Artificial Intelligence. Um, it involves 61 universities um, in Italy and five federated PhD courses. Uh, artificial intelligence is the common base with five areas of specialization, health and life sciences, industry 4.0, security and cybersecurity, environment and agriculture, and finally society. And in this last area, uh, University of Trento participates. So in the, in the area of society. So that was a brief overview of our information engineering and computer science department. Um, that, along with all the other departments in uh, the University of Trento, results in a really top quality educational experience. And also, as we talked about, also outside of the classroom, uh, we consistently rank highly on national and international ranking uh, lists. You can see here the first three are um, national Italian rankings. And we are first among medium-sized Italian universities with a score of 98.7 out of 110. And then moving down, um, the last two are the international rankings, um, the Times Higher Education World Ranking in 2022. We are 351 to 400. So number 10 of 53 Italian universities included in the ranking. And then QS World University Rankings, again, 2022. The University of Trento was 440. So number 10 of 41 included Italian universities. Um, so that wraps up the presentation. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, I think there will be time for two or three minutes now for me to answer them. Otherwise, you can write to us at uh, the International Relations Division, uh, international at unitn.it. And then here you can see uh, the lower right corner, our webpage, uh, web magazine, and then social media. So thank you all for participating, and I look forward to seeing you at the University of Trento. Give me the name, the, the link to our um, computer science department, since that was the requested uh, theme.
for this webinar, but also uh, this is the university webpage um, where you can find information uh, in detail about all of our departments at the University of Trento and services and facilities for students. Um, as I mentioned, I, I only have audio capability right now, unfortunately. Uh, All right, thank you so much, here. Mr. Jonathan. Now, let's proceed to the topic in international business from IE University in Spain. Our speaker is the Senior Manager for Asia Pacific. Let's now listen to Ms. Irina Vignano. All right, so unfortunately, Ms. Irina is not, is not present in our Zoom meeting. So down to, we're now on our topic in accounting and finance. And our first speaker is a brilliant young graduate in the Master of Sciences in Accounting, Financial Management and Control at Bocconi University in Italy. She's filled her curriculum with international experience at King's College London and Columbia University and has now started her career as an investment banking analyst at JP Morgan. Let's welcome our speaker who will be joining us virtually, Ms. Elena Donati. Hi, my name is Elena. I'm a final year student in the Master in Accounting, Accounting Financial, Financial Management, Management and Control. Control. And, today and today I'm going, going to present the balance, balance scorecard. scorecard. What, what is, is a balance scorecard, scorecard and especially, especially a brief case, case study, study about the balance scorecard, scorecard for, for Peloton. Peloton. So, so <clears> this is a brief agenda, agenda what we are, we are covering, covering today, today in terms, terms of uh, the topics. topics. And then, and then moving, moving quickly to, to the Peloton. Peloton. So, so, what is Peloton? Uh, Peloton, Peloton is, is a really, really innovative, innovative company. company. It is at the interchange between fitness and, and technology. technology. Especially, Especially they, they produce, produce bikes, bikes and, and threads. They, they are pretty expensive, expensive uh, gym, gym uh, products. products. But, but with, with these products, products they, also they also offer a library, library of media, media content, content that, that is um, achievable, that, that can, can be uh, used, used by users so using, using a subscription. subscription. So, so the, the firm was, of course, course founded a while ago, but, but it became, became super popular during COVID, COVID when, of course, uh, home, home gyms became, became very popular. popular. They recorded the 4 billion annual revenue in 2021. But then, but then when, of course, course uh, the COVID came with uh, passes, passed, passed, passed and, and people, people went back to gym, gym. they reported significant, significant losses, they had a change in terms of top management, they changed CEO, and they had a lot of layoff in terms of employees. We can, we can see, see here the share price, it dropped, dropped dramatically in 2022, and then and the strategy. strategy. So, so the firm, firm as, as I said, said before, uses technology, technology to design and connect people, people through, through fitness, fitness. So they, they put the members first, members. They, they want to be the best, best place, place to work, work. They, they want, want to create a, a really tight, tight uh, uh, culture, culture in terms of workplace. So, so I mean, amazing strategy. But we said the company is actually facing a lot of problems, a lot of struggles right now. So, so why don't, don't we create a balance scorecard for, for its own strategy? strategy? What's, What's a balance, balance scorecard? scorecard? It, it is a document, document that, is that is an ensemble of set of KPIs, of set of metrics that is that used to, to assess, assess each division and, and each manager. So, and, and here, here we said we have Peloton strategy. strategy. Let's, Let's look at four perspectives. perspectives. Financial, financial customer related, related internal processes, learning and growth. growth. Think, Think about, about strategic, strategic objectives, objectives KPIs, KPIs, and understand, and understand how, how we can design, design a balance scorecard to drive the strategy, to rethink the strategy, strategy reshape, reshape the strategy, and drive it forward. forward. The, the first, first perspective, perspective, the first sphere, sphere we are addressing is financial. In, 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 in this case, case in, in terms of key performance indicators, we look at the overall sales growth, growth profitability of each division, return on equity, market, market share, so, so how they, they, they perform they compared to competitors, and then, and then the cash flow from product sales and subscriptions. As I said before, 
the, the uh, uh, Peloton, Peloton provides, provides products, products and, and they are, of course, so, so they, they sell products, they sell bikes and friends, but they also sell subscriptions. They have two core businesses, two divisions, each of them need different uh, KPIs and need a different balance scorecard in terms of division and management uh, of the division itself. The second, the second sphere perspective, perspective we are addressing is customer related. related. Customer, customer satisfaction. We look at customer, customer retention, how many people are renewing the subscription, customer referrals, so promo codes, usage time, time selling. selling. And, and then, then, as I said, said before, the customer satisfaction engagement that's measured using surveys. The third element we look at are internal processes. We look at new launches in terms of products and contents, supply chain efficiency in terms of cash conversion cycle, the breakdown of fixed and variable costs, technological development, so the amount of our revenue expenses that is that is used, used every year, year and then the product quality, quality benchmark, the perceived quality, quality of products, products uh, in, in terms, terms of customers, customers measured by surveys. surveys. And then and lastly, lastly, learning and growth, growth. The, the employee sphere, employee retention rate, rate, how many, many years are employees staying, staying within, within the firm, employee, employee training, training time, time. So, so the amount of time that's deployed, deployed in order to train and all the employees, diversity of the workforce, and then surveys, we look at the employee satisfaction rate and the transparency. Benchmark. Both, Both of them, them are qualitative measures uh, and new use surveys in order to assess them. them. So, so finally, why, why is the balance scorecard so relevant? The balance scorecard is a set of metrics. It's what we use in financial management and control in order to assess the performance of a firm as a general entity and each division and each line manager. But it's also a way in order to align the management with the strategy and the decisions that are taken by the top management. As, As you can, can see, see, we move from, from strategy to four areas of focus, and, and each area of focus is the fine, I mean, um, kind, kind of com 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 comprehend some KPIs, KPIs that are specifically designed for that specific division. division. So, so KPIs, KPIs are, of course, objective, objective metrics. metrics. They are, as I said before, specifically designed. And then we have targets. targets. These targets are time but achievable in order to boost and enhance the performance of managers without creating a kind of case of burnout. Bur 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 and then, and then uh, looking, looking specifically, specifically at, at Peloton, Peloton case, case, of course, the company is facing a lot of backlash, is facing a lot of problems. problems. They need they to rethink the strategy and, and driving the um, redesign of the strategy using a, a control measure like the balance broker. That's, that's a way for the top management in order, in order to control the whole organization. organization. It's, it's something that is extremely, extremely helpful, helpful and relevant. So, so that's, that's it for today. today. Thank, Thank you very much, much for your attention. attention. Actually, we're lucky in Miss Irina on site. I'd like to invite Miss Irina. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a short introduction on myself. I'm Irina Denano. I am here today representing IE University in Madrid, Spain. Um, I had some videos presentation um, embedded in my, in my PPT, but I have been informed that the Wi-Fi is not available, so I'm not going to play the video. Um, but hopefully I can convey a little bit of what IE is. and. Um, a little bit more of who we are in terms of programs that we offer, curriculum, uh, experience in Madrid, in Spain, and um, yeah, overall what IE has to offer or our unique value proposition for you to consider when you um, explore growing your professional career abroad. Um, I'm not Spanish of origin, I'm Romanian of origin. I was born in Romania, but I have been living in Spain for the last 19 years, 19 years and a half. I, am, uh, I own Spanish nationality by uh, residency. 
um, I went to Spain or to Madrid uh, itself for vacation. I decided to stay because I fell in love with the place, with the city. I did not fall in love with the men. I fell in love with the country and the city and the climate and the food and the culture. So um, I decided also to pursue my education with IEE. I've studied business management, but um, I decided to do project management and leadership, which is an executive education program at IE University. And then in 2016, I pursued my executive MBA. Um, hence, now I'm here in uh, not just a, as a professional with more than, uh, yeah, almost 20 years of professional experience, um, but also on a, as an alumna. So I'm happy to share my experience with you. Uh, currently in my role, I uh, do business development for Asia Pacific. I uh, work with a team of about 17 members across the six offices we own in the region. IE as a university is quite global. Um, although we are based in Madrid, the campus is there and I'm going to share a bit more about that with you in a second. Uh, we do have 30 international offices and um, we do that, I call this a matrix because we want to be as close as possible um, to bring and share uh, not just the guidance throughout the admission process, but also to bring that experience to the region. Um, I also oversee the marketing, obviously, and the corporate engagement. So I work a lot of with companies, not just with individuals. I own an executive coaching also, and um, you know I'm, I'm passionate about um, the development or helping, supporting the development of, um, of individuals and companies across the markets. Well, with that said, I'm going to just dive in in the presentation. This was a video I wanted to play about the next best you. And um, it's a shame I cannot play it because although you can find it online, of course, um, you can check it out maybe when you're on Wi-Fi. Um, it conveys a little bit the essence of IE, and that is um, us customizing the experience for you. Uh, as I mentioned, IE is quite international, it's quite diverse. We are based in Madrid, in the capital of Spain, of the beautiful capital of Spain, in the middle of Europe, which is important because from a career experience, I think, is um, enables, it enables you to go towards other continents, not just towards other countries in Europe. If you'd like to relocate geographically or consider other industries and sectors. And Segovia, which is another campus, is a city uh, a bit more north of Madrid. It's about 20 minutes away by AVE, which is the fast train or the speed, speed train in Madrid. Um, and um, is hosting the under, undergraduate degrees. Madrid actually is for the undergraduate programs and also masters, specialized masters and MBAs. This is the new campus we opened in September 2021. Um, it's a um, environmental friendly campus. It's the only vertical campus in Madrid. It has 35 stories. A lot of areas of obviously where students actually come together to work on different practical projects. The methodology of IE is actually case study methodology. And in um, degrees like architecture, for example, or real estate, you have the opportunity to actually see the projects live <laughs> as you move towards the, the campus. Um, we have about 6,000 students at the undergraduate level. There's a lot of spaces, as I said, for networking and um, a lot of educational spaces for interaction and debates. Um, our DNA, I wanted to highlight these, uh, these aspects because these are pillars for us on which we have built pretty much all the programs. The technological immersion and innovation is important for us because that diversity in the classroom, uh, it's the premises on which you build new ideas. Uh, the entrepreneurship mi mindset is also an important value for us and it has Im been embedded across all the portfolio of programs because the school was founded in 1973. It was created and founded by an entrepreneur, hence the entrepreneurial mindset and support that you will find across programs comes from you know, in, in, um, from the inception of, of the university. We do 
um, support entrepreneurs with an I, which means that, for example, if I'm interested in developing or changing, um, you know, the change management, changing the corporate uh, strategy from within, I need to also build that capability, which is a different capability than entrepreneurship with an E, which means I establish my own venture, I go on a joint venture, or I establish my own business, right? So entrepreneurial, it's actually a mindset. Entrepreneurship is actually a mindset. Diversity is huge because although we are based in Madrid, we um, are having a very international cohort, and I'm not just referring to a different or diverse um, uh, group of students coming together, but it's also a diversity in terms of backgrounds. This is where we create or we enhance or we enrich the experience by creating a different way of thinking, by creating solutions to similar problems that people are addressing, companies are addressing in a different way. That's what it's for us, critical mindset or critical thinking because you do debate, you do um, study together with other people um, coming from dif different cultures, different corporate cultures, different personal and individual experiences. Now, it's not just about that. Um, in my experience, I also would highlight that the professors or the faculty are practitioners, which means that they're not just academics, they're not there to lecture you, they're there to create that platform or that conversation and enable the conversation by bringing their own experience in the debate. Because they are practitioners, they have been working with big corporations and they have been working as entrepreneurs owning three or you know, more businesses. So they bring that experience in the conversation. So that's how the learning experience is enriched. Um, Humanities, um, lastly but not least important, um, is I wanted to highlight it because we don't want to create only great top business leaders or managers. We want everybody to keep in mind a positive impact, whether is within your community or within your proximate team or within your country or whether you will decide you know, to, to stay back, develop your career abroad, or come back, um, keep in mind that you always can um, lead um, an enterprise, a venture, or you can work with a big corporation, but you can make a difference in somebody's life, in your community, a positive impact from an environmental perspective or from a different perspective, revenue generation, or customer uh, you know, um, experience uh, perspective and so on. So keep that in mind because that's important for us. This is just about uh, some stats in numbers about IE. We have a cohort of, uh, of uh, faculty members that goes beyond 500, which is um, across all the uh, different schools, which I will explain in a minute. There are a lot of student club activities created and led by students and for students. If there's one area, if you end up applying or get interested in IE, if there's one area that you want to create a club about, you can do so with the support from the IE University. Um, this empowers you and it gives you also the experience of leading and co-creating projects, getting in contact or building your own network with the different professionals from that sector or industry you're interested in. Um, I would highlight also the alumni community, not all the other factors are there, but the alumni community is important because when you see, when you come out of the graduation, you have a very different uh, strategy, right, to build your career. The alumni community internationally is important because if you do choose at some point in your life to do the make the triple jump from a geography perspective, from a sector, from an industry perspective, it's important to know that you count with other alums who have been working or are working with top companies, with top corporations, or with a you know, unicorn with, uh, within the startup ecosystem that can actually guide your journey. So the experience doesn't finish post-graduation and actually continues with that support from the alumni community as well. Um, 
As I mentioned, I is quite global. I call it a matrix because we are based in Madrid and Segovia in the north of the city, but we have uh, 30 different offices across the globe, and that makes it easier for you. For example, if you're based in Manila, you have a team. I, I work with a very good team in Singapore. There's another team in North Asia, in South Korea, in Tokyo, in India, in China, in Taiwan, in Indonesia. So you have a lot of people that are more proximate to you in the region, but also in the headquarters where, uh, where you, can, um, you can definitely address your questions. Our ecosystem is not just about the business school. As you can see, there's a school of technology with masters in big data, business analytics. Uh, there's a lot of projects now going on about the metaverse, right? So if you're interested in more tech sort of studies, you can explore computer science or AI or uh, data analysis and business uh, analytics uh, sort of master degrees. There's a school of architecture with urban planning, with interior design. There's international um, architectural management sort of studies. You have the GPA, which is the School of Global Affairs and Public Pol Pol Policies with Master in International Development and International Relations. Um, there is the, uh, what am I missing, the IE Law School with LLMs. We have the Business School, of course, with Master in Management or the uh, MBA portfolio, both full-time and blended um, uh, type of formats, MBAs, which means that you can study and pursue your um, you know, uh, job at the same time. Uh, I've done my executive MBA in that way, and I have to say I'm proud of it because there are benefits to it. You can actually implement some of the solutions that you build in the class within projects that you're currently working on. So that's very valuable for those of you who cannot leave their job or do not want to leave their job for the time being, and they can continue you know, pursuing their career and scale up the ladder while you are studying uh, your degree internationally. Um, the IE University is basically the undergraduate portfolio with tons of you know, programs, dual degrees, as well as in the master portfolio um, in different areas. The exponential learning is actually shorter programs for executive level professionals or more senior professionals. The Headspring is an organization, is a, and it's a collaboration between IE and uh, Financial ta Times. So these are customized uh, knowledge programs we actually create for companies. So this is pretty much the portfolio of IE. Of course, we have a long-standing uh, trajectory of innovation, and uh, and um, yeah, uh, across the years we have pioneered the online methodology. I'm sure that we all have been impacted, whether professionally or during our studies during the pandemic we actually had um, let's say an advantage in this sense because we were able to move even the full-time portfolio to the online methodology because we have pioneered that even before the pandemic so you have that uh, that there of course we own the triple accreditation by AACSB the Exis and AMBA beyond you know all the other certifications and we're top ranked in the world uh, if uh, you have uh, done some of your homework and um, yeah, you've checked the rankings with QS, with FT, with Economic Times, you have been noticing that IE has been across the years within the top 10 in Europe, within the top first three positions. So that's important, especially as you're looking towards being backed up by a top university uh, brand in, um, in your career. The IE experience is what I mentioned before. Um, and I wanted to also highlight the entrepreneurial kind of support and um, that Madrid is actually home, it's a cosmopolitan city, it's home for a lot of startups. Uh, in the last yeah, 18 years, I would say, uh, this ecosystem or this space of entrepreneurial kind of projects have been growing and has been evolved. Uh, has been evolving uh, right in different industry, especially in the tag digital space uh, or metaverse, as I was mentioning before. So there's a lot of startups being created. At IE, we do have an area which we call Area 31. It's the area of entrepreneurship where um, you know people come together with uh, staff, with faculty, with students, with investors 
to actually uh, discuss and pitch business ideas. So there's a lot of support in that way. There's venture days and venture labs, accelerators where students can actually ideate, create, or come with an existing idea and build a business plan and go to market, pitch to investors, and even get investment from the um, uh, a, uh, business angels or investors uh, at campus. Um, this is just an idea of you know how many nationalities and how the profile of IE is quite diverse, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, another thing that I wanted to highlight is basically the transformational experience, which is the conversions between the personal development and the career development, the professional development, is something that we customize across programs, whether you look at a uh, master in management, which is the business, international business, or you look at the more specialized degree, we uh, take the, um, you know, the, the preparation or the learning to the next level in customizing the experience for each of you. Not everybody comes with the same type of interest or exit strategy when they come and join the university. So we make that, you know, we put effort into customizing your experience. And I think that's, that's something unique about IE. Um, this is what I was mentioning about the professors. These are international professors, not just Spanish professors, and if they are Spanish, they have an international experience. Uh, the highlight here is that they do uh, come with their own experience, and it's important to learn from somebody that is not just an academic, it's actually a professional with academic experience or with academia uh, or research um, expertise in their, uh, in their trajectory. This is just some of the examples. Sandra Comas, which you see at the at the right of your of your yeah of the screen, uh, is a professor I have been collaborating a lot with in the region. Even Prashant Sogacht, uh, he's based out of London now. Uh, he works as an entrepreneur as well, so we've collaborated a lot. Nazareno, who is top top uh, right. <laughs> So he's another, he's alum from IE, but he's also associate professor at IE, so that goes to show a little bit of what I was mentioning about being um, taught uh, or learned with practitioners. Uh, this is a repeated slide. This is a little bit about the diversity in the classroom. Uh, this is not my classroom. I usually put a slide <laughs> with my own class just to give you a sense of how diverse the class is. Um, in terms of nationalities, continent-wise, uh, Asia Pacific, we're actually proud to do, uh, to count with 15% uh, of, you know, the different nationalities across the different programs. Um, we do this on purpose. We do not, uh, we want to maintain that balance of different nationalities in the classroom. We are proud to have a lot of Filipinos in, in, our, in our class, I think, because of the historic proximity and also cultural proximity. There's a lot of synergies that we built uh, with the Filipino students uh, and even beyond graduation with the Filipino alumni. We have a very strong alumni here in the Philippines, in the region. There's a lot of relocation I've learned from the alumni I've met with so far. So that's important to know because again, there's um, you know opportunities of connections and building the career further on. I'm not gonna stop a lot on this slide because I already mentioned the type of programs you will find under the each school uh, in the ecosystem of IE, but just is to give you a little bit of, you know, um, uh, a sense of what type of knowledge areas you can pursue with IE University. Um, the admission journey, again, I'm not gonna stop a lot about it, but I will mention that it's uh, quite straightforward. It's an online application for all our degrees. We do not uh, work with deadlines. It's actually an online application that you start. In my um, opinion, you should uh, consider eight to nine months before the actual program starts. Most of our programs have an intake, master degrees and MBAs have an intake in spring and in the fall. So depending on when you wish to join a program at IE University, you should give yourself seven to eight to nine months in advance. Why? Because it's not just about the admission process. There is a scholarship application which is also done online. So as soon as you submit your application for admission, you can also, with the same credentials, uh, apply for scholarships. We do evaluate um, you know, candidates from a merit uh, perspective, from a professional performance perspective, if you have work experience or expertise in 
any sector um, or internships for what it's worth. Uh, but we do also consider the purely financial necessity. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, applicants. Uh, right now, I think there are about 24 uh, scholarships available with different profiles, um, attending or catering to different needs for, for our candidates. So it's, um, it's a step, it's an important step in the process once you have submitted your application for, for the admission at the, for a program. And then there's the visa application, which is the third most important process. Of course, you will be guided. It's a journey who, uh, that you don't, uh, you don't walk alone at IE once you start it. Um, so there is a team, which is the student services uh, uh, team in Madrid, that will guide you on how to apply, what type of documents to actually prepare for the consulates. It's not through the embassy, it's through the consulates, Spanish consulate. Uh, consulate to make sure that you get the visa on time. That process may be a bit more tedious, not tedious is in complicated, but tedious in terms of time. It can take um, you know, from three weeks to two months to actually obtain a visa. It's not a difficult process, but it's just a timely process, so keep that in mind. That's why, coming back to the timeline that you need to dedicate yourself, you know, once you start the application for the program, you apply for the scholarships and then the visa, it's a safe space and timeline to actually complete all the, all the requirements. There is a, um, you know, uh, the online application is there with a lot of documents you need to upload uh, from the transcripts from your university, uh, diploma from your university. There is an entry exam depending on the program you're taking, which basically can be the GMAT or the GRE or the I Global Admission Test. The I Global Admission Test. Um, the distinction between this one and the GMAT and the GRE is that it does not need preparation. This is a flexibility we offer to those who do not come from my business, statistics, engineering, or um, IT background. So keep that in mind. There's an online assessment, an online interview also with the admission director, or face-to-face -face interview if the admission directors are here and luckily enough, thankfully enough, the markets are open, the travels are open, so we can bring them here. If not, it can be easily done online. Um, the entrance exam, which I mentioned, and then um, the interview with the admission um, director, which I just um, uh, specified. The TOEFL and the IELTS, I do have to mention that is not, it can be wavered in, you know, in your case, because you're coming, if you do decide to apply, you're coming from an English-speaking country, most likely an English-speaking education system, so uh, in this case, it will be wavered. Um, you will be studying in English, but you do have the opportunity to uh, learn Spanish as well. I would definitely encourage you, again, if you're part of the journey at IE, to take the opportunity of the three Spanish course we offer. It's the second most spoken language in the world. I did that myself, and I think it's an amazing opportunity to come out of the uh, benches of, of the school with additional value, additional language skills. Um, which, whether you use it or not, is there to uh, enrich your profile, not just you know a tick in your CV. Um, and you'll probably um, uh, find it valuable when you have to speak a little bit of Spanish to negotiate or to break the ice with a partnership you are trying to win for your company or your own venture. Um, this is another video I wanted to, to share with you, but I cannot play it. Definitely, I'm happy after this session to share the slide deck with you in case you wish to see it. And if not, as soon as you Google it on YouTube, uh, you'll find it for sure. Just to give you a sense of what Madrid is like beyond the campus um, facilities. Um, with this, uh, I end up my presentation. This is my de contact details. Do not hesitate to connect on LinkedIn, on email. We, if you want to keep up to speed with the events we organize face-to-face -face or online or in hybrid mode, um, uh, yeah, you can uh, definitely follow us on Instagram as well. And I'm one click away, whether it's an email or a WhatsApp or a, uh, yeah, whatever social media channel you're using, I'm happy to guide you further. Thank you so much. I really am thrilled for the opportunity to be here with you today, and I hope to speak to you more at the booth or later on. Thank you.
in line still to discuss about accounting and finance is Ms. Monica Nang from the Chamber of Commerce and the representative of Module University in Asia, who will be sharing with us about the Bachelor of Sciences in International Management, Economics, and Financial Management at Module University. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending the presentation of Module University. So Modu University is actually located in Vienna, Austria. Uh, we are located in the Central Europe, right in the middle of Europe. You will see here um, Dr. Kyle Weber. He is the president director of Modul University, and at the same time, he is also the chairman of the Austrian Private Universities Conference. So, as I just mentioned, Modul University is actually located in the heart of Europe. Uh, the campus is located on the highest uh, mountain in Vienna, which is called Kallenberg. So um, I would say if you go to Austria, you, you may want to go up to the mountain and then to look to overlook the beautiful view, uh, you know, uh, uh, from uh, Vienna. You will be able to see the Vienna from the very, very top of the mountain. So, who is the owner of Modu University? You, uh, the university is actually owned by the Vienna Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also the Talent Square Limited. The Talent Square Limited is a company located in UK and of course the Vienna Chamber of Commerce and Industry is a very powerful organization in Vienna. So this university offer two intakes, which is spring and fall, which means you can um, enter the university in February or uh, end of September every year. So this university, although is located in a German speaking country, which is Austria, but then the program the, uh, are taught entirely in English. Interesting enough, uh, this university does not offer any German taught program because this is uh, an English speaking university designed for uh, students that they want to get into the business sector. So that's why they taught in uh, English, which is uh, an international language. And the tuition fee include a German language uh, classes meaning the you don't have to pay extra money to uh, learn German. And all the students, uh, every student will assign an academic advisor following the students uh, throughout their studies, meaning three to four years. And, uh, and the students um, can opt, can actually choose uh, one semester to one of their partner universities around the world to experience uh, an exchange semester. So what, the, what kind of program does Modul University offer? You can see on the screen. It offers a foundation program, which uh, there are two different kinds of program which the students can choose, which is a business or a tech. Uh, the foundation program lasts for only one semester, which is approximately five months. So who, are sh who should enter or who should um, join the foundation programs, which are the students that they have to complete the high school, which means they have to graduate from high school. But it's just that their English or their academic score are not as strong than they 
will be required to study one semester in addition to their bachelor program. And in terms of bachelor programs, you can see here, basically most of the programs are three years. Uh, so it divided into two parts, which, um, uh, which is like the BSc, Bachelor of Science. Uh, under the Bachelor of Science, we have two programs, which is the International Management and the Applied Data Science. And then for the Bachelor of Science, it is not required to do internship. Uh, and then we have another uh, program, it's called the BBA, which is Bachelor of Business Administration. So uh, the BBA in Tourism and Hospitality Management, as well as the uh, Tourism and Hotel Management and Operation. So um, I will explain a little bit uh, in details uh, at, the, at, at the, the next slides. Um, just to differentiate the difference between BSc and BBA, as I just mentioned, BSc, you are not required to do internship. But for the BBA, it is a mandatory internship. Uh, the students will have to do a mandatory internship of um, uh, at least six months, which is 900 hours. And then we also offer a master program, which is the two years duration, because in Austria, the regulation is that you have to complete, um, the master program lasts for two years. Uh, and then we also offer um, MBA program. The MBA program is in fact a part-time program, uh, which lasts for one and a half years. When I say part-time means you ha students will have to attend classes approximately five, uh, uh, five to six uh, days um, out of um, a, a month, uh, which lasts uh, from Friday to Monday because this program is actually designed for working adults. And also it we offer a PhD program which lasts for four years. So for the BSc in international management, there are four uh, special specializations, or we say majors, which is the business psychology, international marketing, entrepreneurship and leadership, as well as uh, the advanced international management. So um, as you can see here, I highlighted uh, this program is indeed uh, focusing on business like accounting, management, financial, management, international, corporate finance. Uh, now the world is uh, changing and there's a trend of uh, you know studying this uh, particular program is called applied data science when we call when we say AI, artificial intelligence, blockchain, so this is the program that uh, the stu um, uh, we are talking about uh, AI, blockchain, uh, data mining. So you will see there are four special special specializations that the students can select. Okay, so for the BBA program, this is also one of the very popular program at Modu University. Uh, the degree is the Bachelor of Business Administration uh, in Tourism and Hospitality Management. But there are two majors that the students can choose from, which is the Tourism and Event Management as well as the Hotel Management, which is a three years program. So for the master program, we have two uh, masters for uh, students to choose from which is the Bachelor of Science, a full-time two years program, and also a part-time MBA, which lasts for one and a half years. You can see there are six specializations which according to the student's interest that uh, he or she can focus. So the university offer orientation for the two intake, and there are a wide range of student clubs that the students can join. 
and then all the new students will be assigned a buddy, meaning a senior student, to guide him or her throughout their journey. Uh, also, we have a student service center which helps the students to uh, solve all their problems. Uh, exchange program I have mentioned, and then there is also an agency to help the students uh, apply for their visa, support their, their visa application, and look for housing. So, um, as you may have heard that Vienna rank number one worldwide for the for quality of life in the past 10 years consecutively. Um, so where does the student uh, uh, was, uh, stay? So Modu University has four partner dormitories. All students will be staying at a single room. The um, uh, uh, monthly um, rents would be ranging from 350 euro to 500 euro per month. So um, on this slide, you will be able to see the tuition fee of Modu University. One euro is equal to 59 pesos now um, uh, currently. And on the left column, you can see the semester fee meaning the fees per semester and on the right hand side the column it shows the total number or uh, the total cost for the whole program so scholarships uh, there are uh, i wouldn't say scholarship but there are some reduction uh, for different programs so if you for instance take the um, tourism and hospitality management program, then you will get a 500 euro per semester uh, reduction. And then if a student pay the total tuition fee at once, there will be a 7% reduction. Uh, if the student pay uh, the tuition fee annually, then there will be a 5% and then semester pay in semester, there will be a 2% as such. So uh, if you would like to apply for this university, then we need these documents, high school uh, transcript for the past three years, and then you need to take um, an English uh, exam, which um, can be IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, Cambridge uh, certificate. And you need to write a CV, motivation lectures, and then your um, uh, teachers or professors or lecturer will have to write write um, a recommendation letter for you so thank you very much uh, for your attention thank you Thank you, Ms. Monica, for that presentation. All right, there you have it. But before we proceed to the Q&A, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Ms. Chiara Sansoni from Bocconi University. Let's give her a round of applause, please. My name is Chiara Sansone, and I work for Bocconi University, where I've done both my bachelor and master program. Then I decided to, to stay there, and I am working for the guidance and recruitment office. That is the office in charge of recruiting students for both uh, bachelor of science and master of science program. Uh, so maybe I can share with you just a few information about our university. We are located in Milan, in Italy, in the northern part of the country, um, and uh, we are we the university focus is still on business and uh, management, and um, we offer, uh, as I told you, both 
Bachelor of Science and Master of Science program. For the um, entire list, uh, you can come over at the booth later or you'll find everything on our website. Uh, but just for you to know, for the Bachelor of Science, what we ask for in terms of admission uh, is a test that can be an SAT or the ACT or the Bocconi test, so the test done by our university. And then the grades from your uh, second to last and third to last year of high school. Um, the application for the Bachelor of Science for starting in September 2023 are already open and will close on the 26th of January. As concerns our Master of Science program, uh, again, the focus is still on economics and management. So we offer business program, finance program, uh, marketing management program, everything is on our website. Um, the application are open for the 2023 intake and um, what we ask for is a GMAT or a GRE test, and then the GPA from your bachelor program, as well as a curriculum and a motivational letter. Um, I don't wanna take too much time, but uh, maybe we can go with the Q&A, and if you have any other question, I'll, I'll be at the booth. All right, so. Do we have questions from our on-site and online participants? We have Miss Monica here and Miss Kara to address your queries. None, I guess. How about online? Do we have questions from our online participants? None? All right. Okay, so. Thank you very much. Um, again, this is Hazel from the Holy Cross of Davao College. Thanks for having me as your moderator and enjoy the rest of the day.